and you know our legislative the people, and the president belongs to us. Because the BC and the DBC, we are all my mates here. Yeah. So when I'm going to say, when I'm going to say, I say, don't, don't ask me about my degree. Let me tell you know that I was in university. And that is what While I was there for four years, I said, Do you know this me? Lady, it wasn't the mystery. I said, I went to see the bishop of Osaka today, the Catholic bishop of Osaka. And I said, I went to his house and I said, I called the name of this thing, called the name of this thing. He said, I said, How? I said, My God, I know every street here, I live in all four of Everybody knows that I took my own hand and I'm in the campus. So I know so I said, this is, thank you. Mr. Ben, thank you, thank you, thank you. The lecture, I'm sure, the DBC and the BC are facing to it. I've always said BC. I'm one of those who are protesting when I hear people being given doctorate degree by a great university like this, okay. And as governor, and as the recently, just about two weeks ago, a university insisted they must give me a doctorate degree. And I've always insisted, today I want to answer that door, I wish for it. <laughs> but there are people, but the times I listen to people, and I say, you might consider them for a doctorate, honorary doctorate degree. You would know what this lecture means to me and all of us who listen to this lecture. You know, in Nigeria, we don't like lecture, we don't like meetings like this. If I ask them and do my career or very a ceremony and everything, the place will be filled. If it's a political meeting now, the place will be filled. That is the failure of Nigeria. Because we don't listen in what we want to listen to. We listen to faith. Then I thank you. You will know what you've done to people like me today. I, you know what I did when you were lecturing? I asked them to find me three of the books, because in your book. I said find three, because I usually travel to one, keep two in different places, so I can be referring to them. <laughs> then I was able to educate us on ethical leadership and failure. And when the country is still failing, I was able to show it clearly. The only thing we have at this aggressive beginning is that it is a failing state, if I listen to you very well. Nigeria is a failing state. What qualifies you for a first state? Number one is the way you are no longer in control of your territory. Nigeria is no longer in control of its territory. I was to leave a new good city and this morning. I was told that I have to wait to seven thirty to drive to Sukha because the road is somehow <laughs> by the security agency. I stood here and I was telling them a story. And I used to go to from here to a new group to in the night to a party and come back at 3 a.m. So now I'm being told to wait to 7 10. And that is the situation. I left here ago yesterday coming to a new group. I was told, no, you can't drive that far. You can fly to Lagos and fly to a new group. And I said, in this territory, they told me that I will kill people in Limba and now they are dead. Please be going. Whatever we get to see is not part of our country. That is the third stage. The second thing is when you are no longer in control of the economy. We are no longer in control of this economy. I was telling somebody yesterday who told me about inflation. And I said, Nigeria. Is not calculating the inflation very well. And I don't want to join issues with them. But I let 
the inflation statistic and it showed that transport over the past one year increased by about three percent. And I said, you see how we have become liars in this context. For one child to Lagos on a bus used to be nine thousand. Now it's nineteen thousand something. How can it be three percent? <laughs> and that is nonsense. We have an inflation that is over 50 percent. Same thing goes, nobody knows the rate of exchange today. You wake up in the morning, what you get, you everything. And you ask that question. And that is what is happening here. We have an unemployment that nobody can imagine the level of unemployment in Nigeria. Nobody can measure it today. He said that we are just tax producing poverty. That's all we're doing. When I'm thinking where I was coming from, I told Bishop, I said, Bishop, let me know what they tell you that the oil still, people are still not oil, but there's illegal mining. The only people who are still in oil are the fully government. Nobody can, nobody here can steal oil. Nobody here. <laughs> to steal oil, you need a ship. For a ship to come to our territory, you need to be approved. It was after the person approval. And the ship is not tiny. It's not a canoe. It's not a small boat. It is a ship that carries several barrels. So it is people in government that are stealing. For anybody to tell you it's illegal mining, they are saying it's not illegal. I told people to the attorney bishop and said, can I come to Suka here? In any community in Suka to mine anything illegal would that the citizens approving it? They will kill me immediately. So if anybody is doing mining here, it's by approval of Nigeria. Nigeria has turned into a criminal society. Where those who are supposed to be leading it have turned it themselves into a criminal. That's why we don't care about anything. So if you ask now, Peter, where did you go to school? He says, oh, it was in a school camp. Where is your result? Which department? He doesn't know. And then the university said, and people said, university should release it. Then Peter, you will shoot. I said, don't release it. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> this was one who said, you went to this university. <laughs> I was in the Suka. I'm a student in the Suka. It doesn't make sense. You don't even need to say you are. You went to school. You might have somebody who went to school. There's so many great people in the world who didn't go to school. The biggest company in the world today is Apple. Apple today, with the market valuation of over 